Ecclesiastes, the fourth chapter. I'm going to pick up where we left off last week because it didn't quite get done. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes, the fourth chapter, and we're going to go to the same verse we read last week, the ninth verse. Before we do that, I'll share with you once again that one, one of the first things, I think it's the first thing that God said about man in the Garden of Eden is that it is not good that man should be alone. And uh, we talked about how that, of course, we know he was talking about making him a, a wife, a helpmate, to uh, be with him. But the same principle can be applied to our text in Ecclesiastes, the fourth chapter. It is not good for you to be alone. It is not good for me to be alone. We need one another. We need the prayers of one another. Amen? Hallelujah. In the Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes, the fourth chapter and the ninth verse, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. It says in verse 10, for if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow, but woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Aren't you glad you got people praying for you? Amen. Aren't you glad you got somebody that will pray for you this morning? We need one another's prayers. As we walk this road, this journey, we'll go through troubles. All of us know very well. We will go through troubles. We will go through trials. We will go through dark valleys. And woe unto him that is alone during those times. Now, we know the Lord's always with us. But he's trying to teach us here that as brothers and sisters, as children of God... We should walk together in the faith, lifting one another up in prayer, encouraging one another, praying for one another, helping each other along the way, because there's times that we feel like we can't go on any farther. And we need somebody's prayers to come along beside us and give us the encouragement. Somebody to lift us up before the Lord and say, Lord, help them to go on another mile. Give them the strength to go on another mile. Lord, help them to face another day. Every one of us have been in that situation where we needed desperately somebody to pray for us. We needed desperately somebody to help us along the way. We need one another's prayers. I need your prayers. And you need my prayers. And we need to lift each other up. It goes on to say in verse 11, again, if two lie together, what's it say? It says that they have heat. They can be warm. But how can one... Be warm alone. Teaching us that we should walk. The Bible says if we have, if we, if we, uh, uh, the scripture left my mind. Teaching us to, that we need our brother and our sisters. That other scripture come to me in a minute. We have fellowship one with another in the blood of Jesus Cleanses us from all sin, but I can't think of the first part that goes with that. If we walk in the light, thank you, Jesus, as He is in the light, we have fellowship one for another. So we can walk in like faith, the only faith, and that is faith in Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And as brothers and sisters, we walk together in this journey. No man is an island. Every one of us needs somebody to pray for us. Every one of us needs... To know that somebody's there that whenever we're in trouble, we can say, hey, I need help. I need prayer. We talked last week about the buddy system. And if you look up the definition for that, it's a term that the world use, uses. And it talks about two individuals who become one in purpose and in one in what they're doing. They'll tell you if you go mountain climbing, be sure you take a buddy with you. Because you don't want to be hanging out there on the side of a mountain by a rope and you can't get a grip, brother buddy, and be by yourself. And nobody there to help you. They'll tell you if you go swimming, Make sure you take somebody with you in case something happens and you need help. On this journey that we're on, we need help. Amen? We need somebody to pray for us. And that's what we talked about last week. That's what we're talking about this morning. When you get a text from Brother Billy saying, hey, please pray for me. I need your prayers. Amen? I need you to stop, if it's possible, whatever you're doing and pray for me. When you send me a text and say, pray for me or pray for my loved one, you need me to stop whatever I do. You don't need me to say, okay, I'll pray for you and then never get around to it. You need me to stop what I'm doing if, if it's possible, if I can do it. It's, if not, then as soon as I can, I need to stop what I'm doing and say, Lord, whatever this need is, 
I bring them before you and I ask you to strengthen them. I ask you to give them help. I ask you to give them help in this situation. Whatever the need is that they have. Because we need one another's prayers. Amen. We need to lean, be able to lean. Listen, I don't know where I'd be if I, didn't ha if I hadn't had y'all lean on during this time and other people out there that are watching and individuals out there that have been there for me in a special way. I know that the Lord has been with me all the way through it, but I've needed you. Amen. I've needed you. We need one another to lean upon. We need to be able to know that we know that when I ask you to pray, you pray for me. And when you ask me to pray, I pray for you. Amen. It's, too, it's better that two walk than, to want, than for one to walk alone because I need your prayers and you need my prayers. Hallelujah. Last week we talked about Aaron and her. We talked about how that Moses told Joshua to go into the valley and fight against Amalek. And Moses and Aaron and Hur went up on the mountainside and Moses had the rod of God. And the Bible says as long as Moses had his arms held high, the children of Israel was winning the battle in the valley. But as the day went on, he began to get weary and his arms began to get heavy. And his arms began to let down. The Bible says when his arms would be let down, the battle, the enemy would begin to win the battle. But as long as his arms were held up, the children of Israel would be winning the battle. So when he got tired and when he got weary, Aaron and her fixed him a place to sit down. Sometimes we need to be able to sit down, amen? Knowing that our brothers and sisters have our back. Knowing that our brothers and sisters will lift us up and at the time whenever we're weary. Like Moses was, his arms were heavy and they were weary. Aaron got on one side and her got on the other side and they held his arms up because he was too weary and too tired to hold his own arms up. Sometimes we need that from our brothers and sisters. We need their prayers to come up. Uh, Michael Combs wrote a song called Carry Me to Jesus on Wings of Prayer. Amen. We need somebody to pray for us for our strength. We need to feel those prayers of our brothers and our sisters whenever we get to the place to where the point to where that we are weak. We get to the point where our eyes are so full of tears that we lose sight of Calvary. Sister Patty, maybe the valley, maybe the night is so dark that we lose sight of Calvary. We need a brother or a sister to point us to Calvary's finished work. Amen. To remind us that it is finished. That God has this. It may not seem like it right now, but He's still with you. It may not seem like it right now, but He can work this for your good. It may not seem like it right now, but He said that He would be with you, never leave you, never forsake you. We need people, amen, to remind us of those things sometimes. Whenever we're in the heat of the battle, whenever we're struggling, Brother Rodney, we need somebody to send us a scripture, to send us some encouragement, to send a prayer our way. Let somebody know, hey, I'm praying for you, amen. You're not in this thing alone. You're not walking alone. You've got somebody walking walking along beside of you and I'll be there to pray for you and I'll be there to help you to have strength to go on and to put one foot in front of the other whenever it seems like you can't do that because I've been there when it seemed like I couldn't do that I've been there where I didn't want to do that I was just a suit stayed in a bed and pulled the cover off my head and never came out again oh but the prayers of those that have prayed for me, gave me the strength, and has helped me to continue to go on. Hallelujah. I can't, I can't express to you today how important it is that we pray for one another. Amen. I know the world belittles prayer, and sadly much of the church are so ignorant, so do they. But prayer is a powerful thing. Turn to the book of Mark. We didn't get to this last week. Mark, the second chapter. Mark the second chapter. Mark 2 and 1. I'm going to look at a man for just a minute or two that couldn't get to Jesus. He was chained to his sick bed. How many people ever felt like you was chained to your sick bed? Amen. How many people ever felt like that it was a struggle to even pray? It was a struggle to even get to Jesus with your prayers. Amen. How many times have you 
prayed and you thought, seems like my prayers are going up, they're hitting the ceiling, coming right back down at me. Amen? Doesn't seem like they're getting to the throne at all. This man could not get to Jesus. The Bible says in Mark, the second chapter, in the first verse, and again, he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noised, it was noised that he was in the house. Oh, hallelujah. And the Bible says, and straightway many were gathered. That means a great, a great crowd gathered together. Insomuch, listen to what the Bible says, that there was no room to receive them. That place was overflowing. It was standing room only. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. Listen to this. Verse 3. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. This was a man that was on his sick bed. Now, Word had got out that Jesus was coming and where he was at. And of course, here come the multitude. They were searching for miracles and looking to hear from Jesus. And of course, none of them was there whenever times got rough and he was in Pilate's Hall. But right now, he was working miracles and they were there. It was so packed that nobody else could get in. There was one old boy that was sick and he was on his, he was on his sick bed. He couldn't get up and go to where Jesus was. But somehow he must have heard that Jesus was going to be there. Or maybe his four friends heard that Jesus was going to be there. You see, his four friends, they probably had needs in their life. Every one of us have needs in our life. But we shouldn't spend all our time praying for us. We need to pray for everybody else too. Amen? These men could have said, hey, I'm going to go get a front row seat. They knew Jesus was there, which is evident because they brought the man carrying him. So they knew Jesus was there and they could have been like, well, I don't have time to mess with him. Oh, Bob's just going to have to stay that way. He can't get to him. He's on his own. He, he's by himself. You see, woe would have been that man if he hadn't had somebody, some friends that would have got on each corner of his car, picked him up and carried him to Jesus. Amen. Woe is us today if our brothers and sisters neglect to pray for us. These men could have said, we're going to get there first. We're going to get a front row seat. We're going to get what we need from Jesus. But they were more concerned about the, friend, the, the need of their friend. And the Bible says that they brought to him one born of four. That means that there was one man on one corner and one man on another and two in the front. Amen. And they came packing this man to Jesus because this man couldn't get to where Jesus was. I don't know about you, but I can testify today that I've been in places where I feel like I couldn't get to Jesus by myself. And thank God somebody somewhere burnt the midnight oil or bent their knee or just prayed in their heart and called out Brother Billy's name in prayer. Amen. And began to lift me up. I've had people text me. I had two women come by my house during all of this time. I, I, was, I was weeping and sobbing. I said, God, I've got to have something. I've got to have something. I've got to have help. God, help me. And as I was praying and I was weeping and I was crying, God is my witness, I heard this. And I thought, who in the world? And I opened the door and there stood one Pentecostal woman, hallelujah, and there was another one in the van. And I stepped out back and the one in the van got out and came up there. She looked like she needed prayer, but she didn't come to get prayer. She came to give prayer, amen. And those two Pentecostal women laid hands on me, hallelujah, and a neighbor from up the road seen what was going on and he came down there and he laid hands on me and we had prayer meeting out there on the back steps. Why? Because I was, I was in a place where I was struggling. I said, God, please, I've got to have help. I've got to have have you? I can't do this. I can't go on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the Lord had put me on somebody's heart. Glory to Jesus. To come and pray for Brother Billy. Amen. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad this morning that when you're going through a struggle, when you can't get your prayers out, you may not know what to pray. You may not even be able to utter the words. God will put you on somebody's heart. God had put this man on the heart of these four men. Sister Teresa and one got on each corner and they began to pack him to where Jesus was. We don't know what these men, what kind of physical shape they were in, but if they're like the rest of us, Brother Bubby, they had something wrong with them. Amen. I don't know anybody that don't have something wrong with them. Amen. <laughs> I don't know anybody that don't have something wrong with them. So they probably had a need of their own. 
But they laid that need aside for the moment. Amen. They laid that prayer for themselves aside for the moment. They laid the, the need that they needed to be there on the front row. And they began to pack this man to Jesus. Now what does the Bible say? The Bible says that when they got to where Jesus was, they looked and they couldn't get to him. The place was so full, they could not get into the house where Jesus was. So the four boys said, well, we tried, and they laid their fin down and walked away. That ain't what it says, is it? If you go ahead and read the rest of the story, it says that they tore the roof off. How many times have you prayed for somebody and it seemed like the situation just got worse? You, the devil might have told you, you might as well just quit praying. Devil would have loved it if these men had set this man that was sick of the palsy down on his sick bed and said, listen, buddy, we tried, but the situation's worse. We carried you this far. I don't know how far they carried the man. Might have carried him, I don't know, might have carried him two or three miles, might have carried him two or three blocks. I don't know where they were at. But they picked him up and they carried him. And when they got there, they could have said, well, the situation's worse than we thought. We thought we could get you to Jesus, but it ain't working. See you later, buddy. We got other plans. We got things to do. No, but they took that old sick man on that sick cot to, on his sick bed and they carried him to the roof. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. They tore part of the roof off and they let that man that was sick on his sick bed, that man that was sick of the palsy, down into the midst of the crowd. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And what's the Bible say? Let's read it. I'm getting... I'm getting beside myself. Uh, which verse did we get to? And when they, now verse 4, and when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, <laughs> I, the owner of the house probably appreciated that. Amen. When they had broken it up, they let down the bed where the sick of the palsy lay. And the Bible says, when Jesus saw their faith. Oh, somebody say, saw their faith. Hallelujah. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. And if you read down a few verses, once Jesus got rid of a religious devil, he told this man, you're healed. Take up your sick bed and walk. And he got up and he took up his sick bed and he walked off. And it said that because Jesus, why did that happen? Why did that happen? Because Jesus saw the faith of these four men. Now this man that was sick of the palsy had faith himself, no doubt. But these four men that carried him to Jesus, Jesus saw their efforts. Jesus saw their determination. Jesus saw their faith. And because of that, this man got what he needed. I need you to be determined enough. I need you to care enough. I need you to put to, to, to lay aside enough of your time to pray for me. You need me to care enough. You need me to be determined enough. You need me to make time to pray for you. Amen? Amen. To pray for you. Hallelujah. <laughs> when Jesus saw the man that was sick with the palsy, when he saw their faith, he said, thy sins be forgiven thee. And in verse 12, he tells him to, to get up and take his bed and walk. And immediately he gets up and walk in verse 12. Why? Because he was born of four. Hallelujah. That song that I told you that Michael Combs wrote, it says, carry me to Jesus on the wings of prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. We need people to carry us to Jesus on wings of prayer. We need people that will pray for us. You need me to pray for you because we do not have to walk this journey alone. Amen. Hallelujah. Galatians, you don't have to go there, but Galatians 6 and 2 says, Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Amen. The Bible teaches the power of prayer. Amen. The Bible teaches the power of prayer. The Apostle Paul several times when he was writing his letters, I don't want you to have to turn to all of these, but in Romans 1 and 9, Ephesians 1 and 15, 1 Thessalonians 1 and 2. And those are just a few examples where the Apostle Paul would say things like that you're in my prayers every day, that I'm praying for you, that from the beginning I've been lifting you up in prayer. Hallelujah. We need to pray for one another. 
Hallelujah. Because there is power in prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. We can carry one another's, help carry one another's burdens. You can turn to James 5 and 16. We turned there last week. James 5 and 16. Hallelujah. This is another foundational scripture and truth for this message that I'm trying to relate. I know that I'm not doing a good job. I know there are a million other preachers could do better than me, but you're stuck with me, so i got to do the best that I can. James, the fifth chapter and the 16th verse. James 5 and 16, and we're all familiar with this. James 5 and 16 says, Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Then it says this, The effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much. Amen. And I told you this last week, we could say the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous woman availeth much. Because it's talking about both. Amen. The effectual fervent prayer. Pray ye one for another. Why? Because... It's a waste of time? No. Because the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man or a righteous woman availeth much. Don't dismiss the power of prayer. God doesn't always answer the prayer in the way that we think He ought to. Amen? We don't always get the answer that we're looking for. But God does always answer. Hallelujah. There's a song that the cooks sang and several other people have sang it over the years. And the chorus says this, talking about prayer, it moves mountains, it's moved mountains, parted rivers, brought the dead to life again. I've called upon an old prayer warrior a time or two. If you're in trouble, I'll go down on my bended knees for you. It's just amazing what a prayer can do. Amen. Every one of us in here this morning can give testimony after testimony of what prayer can do. Amen. Amen. Look back there on that back row on the end of it. Amen. Hallelujah. If you need a testimony of what prayer can do. Amen. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. God's still a miracle working God. Amen? Amen. Oh, I said God is still a miracle working God. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. I don't understand why He chooses to answer some prayers the way we want and some prayers the way He don't, but I know this. He is righteous, He is good, and He will always do right. Amen? Hallelujah. And He is still more than able to do that, which goes beyond our imagination, which goes beyond what we can think, which goes beyond what we can ask, Sister Teresa. Hallelujah. It's just amazing what a prayer can do. The second verse of the psalm says, I see a mama and a baby. He's fought for life. The whole night through. Seems hope was gone. Oh, how the tears fell, not a few. But there's old Grandpa over in the corner. He knows the one who'll pull him through. That baby's still alive because of what a prayer can do. Amen. Hallelujah. It's moved mountains, parted rivers. I've called upon an old prayer warrior a time or two. If you're in trouble, I'll kneel down on my bended knee for you. It's amazing what a prayer can do. Hallelujah. Listen, they might have made fun of Grandma because she had a bun and a hairstyle. They might have made fun of her because she didn't wear no makeup and she had on a long skirt. But listen to me this morning. When they needed prayer, when they needed somebody to touch God, they called upon that old prayer warrior and she'd pray until God moved. Hallelujah. It's just amazing what a prayer can do. Hallelujah. And when I'm in trouble, I need you to go down on bended knee and pray for me because the effectual fervent prayers of God's children avail much. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Some may say, oh, I wish he could preach better. I agree with you. Hallelujah. Turn with me as we close. Hallelujah. Oh, we need to bear one another's burdens. We need to pray for one another. Amen. Turn with me to Luke, the 22nd chapter. This is the prayer I need you to pray for me most of all. And this is the prayer that you need me to pray for you most of all. Listen, when I pray for you, I pray that God will lighten your burden. If you're sick, I pray He'll heal you. If you need financial blessings, I pray He'll bless you financially. If you need salvation, most of all, I pray that He saves you. Oh, hallelujah. But for those of us who are born again, this is the prayer that we need prayed for us most of all. Luke 22 and 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you to sift you as wheat. Verse 32 says, and this is Jesus speaking, but I have prayed for thee. See, Jesus could have said, I prayed for you, Peter, that this never happens. I prayed that you never have to go through this. I prayed that you be delivered from this. But he said, I prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, when you come through this, strengthen thy brethren. You see, that's what I need you to pray for me most of all. Like I said, I pray for you that God lightens your load, that He helps you along the way. I pray that He heals your body. I pray that He blesses you financially. But more than anything, I pray this morning for you that after the battle is over, after the smoke is cleared, after the storm is passed, after the sun is shining again, Sister Patty, that you're still rooted and grounded, hallelujah, in the cross of Calvary. I pray that your faith doesn't fail in the midst of the storm. I pray that your faith doesn't fail in the midst of the journey. I pray that your faith prevails and that the anchor still holds, hallelujah, and that you're still holding on to Jesus no matter how rough the storm is, no matter how rough the trial is, no matter how hot the fire is, I I pray this morning that your faith fail not. And that's what I need you to pray for me most of all. That when the storm clears, when the trial is over, when the dust settles, that my faith has not failed, that I'm still holding on to Jesus and He's holding on to me. As I walk through death's dark valley, His sweet light I still can see. Though the burden is so heavy, and the night it is so dark, I need you to pray for me that I'll keep holding on to Jesus till He mends this broken heart. Hallelujah. Amen. I pray this morning that your faith fail not. Hallelujah. That's what's most. Because when in the end... In the end, Brother Bubby, it won't matter what kind of car we drove, what kind of house we lived in, how much money we had in the bank. Once we gone, they're only going to fight over it. None of that will matter. The most important thing and the only thing that will matter is your relationship and your faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. If you're out there today under the sound of my voice and you spend... Six days a week, seven days a week trying to get ahead of the Joneses. Forget about the Joneses and get your eyes on Jesus. Because in the end, the only thing that's going to matter is the relationship you had with Jesus Christ. If you're out there and you don't know Him as your personal Lord and Savior, I plead with you. Somebody said, I'm not going to beg people to get saved. I will. I will. I'll beg you to come to Jesus because this preacher knows that if you die lost, you will spend eternity in the flames of the damned. But if you will turn to Jesus Christ today in faith believing and say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Come into my life. I believe that you died on the cross on the third day you rose again. I put my faith and trust in you as my Lord and Savior. If you will do that, he will write your name down in that Lamb's book of life that we sung about earlier. And you will spend eternity in heaven. Hallelujah. But you must come through Jesus Christ. He is the only way, the only truth, and the only life. Don't forget to pray for one another this week. Anybody else? Somebody else have something before we go?